All right, so today we're going to take a look at questions that come from the work in chapter 3. Let's get right into it. Um, question 10 here says, two identical cylinders 40 millimeters long are cut from a potato. One W is placed in water and the other X is placed in a concentrated sugar solution. What are the lengths of the cylinders after two hours? So this question basically asks you about osmosis. To answer this question, you need to know the definition of osmosis. Osmosis is the diffusion of water molecules from a region of high water potential to a region of low water potential through a partially permeable membrane. So, W is placed in water. So, this would mean that W is placed in a solution with a lower water potential than what is inside the potato uh, uh, cylinder W as W as the potato has the sugars inside of it already. So water would flow down a water potential and that would be from outside to inside the potato because there's a higher concentration of sugars inside W than in pure water. For our other cylinder X, it's placed in a concentrated sugar solution. So here the concentration gradient would be the opposite. The concentration gradient would be towards the potato as it's placed in a concentrated sugar solution. So water would flow from inside the potato where the concentration of sugar is less to outside into the sugar solution because here there's more sugar. So our answer here is that W would, be, would increase in length as it takes on water. But X, however, because it's placed in a concentrated sugar solution, would actually, result, would actually shrink because water is flowing out of X. So our answer is D. So question 9 shows a diagram which is a cell. Which type of cell does the diagram show? So let's take a look here. We can see that this diagram has a cell wall. So it has to be a plant cell. We can also see that this plant cell has lost water since the plasma membrane is pulled away from the cell wall. Uh, which means that the cytoplasmic volume has decreased because water has been lost. So we can immediately... If we take a look at our answers, we can immediately rule out A and B because these pertain to animal cells and we've already uh, seen that this is a plant cell because it has a cell wall. So let's take a look at C and D. A plant cell in a concentrated solution of salts. That would make sense because this cell has lost water. So if there's a higher concentration of salts outside the cell than inside the cell, water would move outside to the environment that the cell is in. So C would be correct. But let's quickly take a look at D. A, a plant cell in pure water. If the cell was in pure water, water would have flown from the outside via osmosis into the cell because the inside of the cell would have a more concentrated solution thus the concentration gradient would be from outside to inside and this cell would have actually become turgid so d is not right our answer here is c question nine here the diagram shows the movement of a concentrated sugar solution up a glass tube. The glass tube is connected firmly to a hollowed out carrot. So this is the experiment at the start. It looks like this. There's dilute sugar solution in the beaker. We've got a carrot with a concentrated sugar uh, solution and then a glass tube. After two hours, our setup looks like this. It's the same setup except the glass tube now contains some of the concentrated sugar solution. So the water has moved into this glass tube and up over here. So why does the sugar solution in the glass tube rise? Let's go through the options that they give us. Sugar molecules move across the carrot tissue into the glass tube. We can definitely rule out that one because it's not the movement of sugar molecules that move into the carrot. It's the movement of water 
which will result in this rising. B, sugar molecules, so we can rule out that one because we've already uh, stated it's not the movement of sugar molecules. So let's take a look at C. Water molecules move across the carrot tissue into the glass tube. That is exactly what is happening here. Over here, water moved into the uh, carrot, across the carrot, into this concentrated sugar solution. Um, it does that because this is a dilute solution and this is a concentrated solution. So there is a concentration gradient um, from over here into here. So the water flows down at a concentration gradient um, via osmosis. So answer here is C. But let's take a look at D. D, water molecules move across the carrot tissue into the beaker. That would be the movement of water molecules from over here out uh, into our beaker and that is definitely not what's happening over here as we can see that the uh, water level has risen over here. Question 10. A plant absorbs water and oxygen into its roots. How are these substances absorbed? Well water we know moves via osmosis because that is what the definition tells us. Oxygen, however, moves into the root via diffusion because diffusion is the net movement of molecules uh, from a region of higher concentration to lower concentration down a concentration gradient. So uh, diffusion can be any molecule, uh, the movement of any molecule, but water only moves via osmosis. And when we speak about osmosis, you know we're speaking about water. So our answer here is B. Question 9. The diagram shows apparatus which can be used to demonstrate osmosis. So let's take a look here. We've got a glass tube 1 and a glass tube 2. The liquid levels are on the same level at the moment. Here we've got a concentrated sucrose solution and in glass tube 1 we've got a very concentrated sucrose solution and in our bath over here we've just got water now this is a partially permeable membrane which means that it allows the movement of water across um, so the water can move either into over here or out of the um, glass tubes so the question here asks us after one hour what would happen to the liquid levels in the glass tubes well this is water and here we've got sucrose solutions. The difference is this is a very concentrated in number one and this is just concentrated. So they're both concentrated uh, sucrose solutions. So the movement of water would be from an area of high water potential, which is in our bath, to an area of lower water potential because there's a more concentrated sugar solution so there's less water per molecule of sugar in these two glass tubes so water will flow into the glass tubes and this would result in the liquid levels to rise now liquid level one you'd probably expect to rise more than in our uh, test tube two, two over here since this is more concentrated than this however don't get tricked into thinking water will that one will rise and two will fall they both will rise because they both concentrated this one is just more concentrated than two over here so our answer here would be they both would rise so that would be d by which process does oxygen pass out of a leaf well, you have to know your definitions to answer this question and our definition of uh, diffusion states that it's the net movement of molecules and ions from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration down the concentration gradient as a result of random movement. Now, there's a higher concentration of oxygen inside of the leaf than in the environment. So water or oxygen will move out of the leaf via diffusion. The diagram represents two liquids separated by a membrane through which osmosis can occur. Here we've got our partially permeable membrane. If we look at our key, this is the water molecules. So these are all water molecules and this is molecules of dissolved substances. So let's just say they are sugar molecules or salt, doesn't matter. 
The question asks which statement describes how the molecules will move? Well, water moves through a partially permeable membrane via osmosis. So we know the water is going to move via osmosis um, because the membrane, uh, it says here that the membrane allows for osmosis. So the molecules of dissolved substances aren't going to pass through, but water molecules will. So if we take a look at our uh, concentration gradients, we can see that this is an area of higher water potential. There's more water molecules per molecules of dissolved substances on the left than on the right. So water always moves via osmosis from a higher water potential to an area of a lower water potential. So water is going to move from left to the right. Now we just have to find the corresponding statement. So overall water molecules move from left to right. Now they say overall because there will be some movement of water molecules from the right to the left. However, the net movement, the overall movement, there will be more water molecules moving from uh, left to right than from right to left.